What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, scratch made, amazing homemade bologna. That's right folks, I made this bologna from scratch, turned one into cold cuts and the other one I smoked to make this amazing gooey cheesy sandwich. Coming up. This is some meat. Pat it dry. And what I got here is about 10 pounds of meat, five pounds of pork butt, and five pounds of brisket. This is the point half of a brisket. And I think this should work out just fine. So like always, just going through and cubing this up. This pork butt came in a nice little pack of pre-cubed stuff. They're still a little bit big for the size grinder I'm gonna use, so I'll probably cube those up a little bit, just because we wanna make sure these freeze nice and quickly and fit down our meat grinder without clogging anything up. Because when we grind these, they're gonna be partially frozen. And if they're too big and frozen, it'll jam the meat grinder, and then you get a bunch of meat stuck in there, and it's a big pain in the butt. So, smaller, the better. And although this is my first time making it, it's pretty much the exact same process as making hot dogs, just one gigantic hot dog instead of a bunch of tiny ones. But it's something I've always wanted to try. And just like that, all cubed up and into the freezer we go. While we wait for that meat to chill, let's go ahead and get our spices together. Starting with nice and plump sausage starter mix, because believe it or not, it's got a lot of the things you're typically gonna find in hot dogs and or bologna, including the milk powder and kosher salt and some garlic and other things. And each packet is rated for five pounds of meat. So because we're doing a 10 pound batch, if my math checks out, two of these should work out pretty well. We're also gonna go in with some pink curing salt, some white pepper, some ground nutmeg, and some coriander. And just get that all nice and mixed up. Beautiful. <sighs> And now that our meat is extra cold, through the grinder we go. I'm going through the coarse die first, and we're just gonna send it through. Beautiful, crumbly grind. And for our second pass, we're going through the small die. Probably should put the blade on first. And just like that, all of our force is nicely ground up. So now we're gonna go in with our spices and just give that a nice little quick distribution as well as some cold water as our liquid and just get everything nice and mixed up. And at this stage, I'd love to keep mixing this until it's nice and tacky, but I can tell that it's starting to get a little too warm. So I'm gonna pop this back into the freezer for a little bit so we don't break our meat and fat emulsion. All right, folks, and now for definitely the worst part about making emulsified sausages, we gotta send all of this in small batches through the food process. That's gonna turn it from this pebbly, coarse ground meat into a fine paste. It's gonna become one hot dog-like brown color and be completely homogenous. And it's tedious and it's honestly kind of gross. And that's pretty much what we're looking for, folks. A nice emulsified meat paste where you can't see individual grains of meat or fat. It is just one united mousse. I don't know. So now we're gonna repeat with all this, making sure that this all stays really cold. Otherwise we're gonna break the emulsion, which we definitely don't want. So as long as this is under, you know, 35 degrees, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna be popping this back and forth in between here and the freezer to make sure everything goes according to plan. And we'll check back in when this is all ground up. After quite a tedious process of going through the old food processor, our farce is complete and looking nice and homogenous. So now it's time to case it up. Ooh, very sticky stuff. Definitely want to try to avoid air pockets on this one. Smelling pretty good though. But I tell you one thing, if you've never made an emulsified sausage, the amount of dishes is rough. This stuff sticks to absolutely everything. Makes you respect bologna a little bit more though. I'll tell you what, beautiful. I really wish I brought my bigger stuffer home, but it's at the chud shop. So we're gonna have to do this through a couple different passes. Boop. As for casings, this is a bologna casing. It's a red fibrous casing, 124 mil, which is just under five inches wide. And I believe it's two feet, 24 inches long. So this is the biggest horn I could find for this thing. I think the other one's also at the chud shop. So we're gonna do our best to stuff this thing as plump and as full as possible, minimizing air gaps and making it as tight as we physically can. I also had this soaking in cold water for the last hour or two, just to make it a little more flexible. All right, 
right, let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out just fine. Putting a lot of pressure on this casing to make sure it stuffs really full. And because it's a fibrous casing, we don't need to worry about popping this thing, theoretically. Ooh, starting to look like a chub, the old chud chub. All right, time to reload. It is kind of nice doing one giant link instead of like a thousand tiny ones. Feeling like a nice log, I tell you. We'll give it a couple of twists if I can. Oh, that's thick. Oh, wow. That is girthy. Woo-hoo-hoo. How are you doing? All right, folks, I took a little bit of string tied off the end. This one already had a string on it. Probably gonna hang it this way because I know it's really tight on this end. And I also know that that string is probably more secure than mine. So at this point, we can just admire at the girthquake that is this chud chub right here. Feeling nice and plump, nice and tight. And yeah, it all fit perfectly. There's a little bit left over, but not enough to make another link or something out of. So I might make a weird sausage hot dog burger out of that. But other than that, into the fridge this goes, I'm gonna try and hang it just so all the gravity helps get this thing nice and plump. And we're gonna let it go overnight to let that cure do its thing, let this casing dry out a little bit. And we'll check back in tomorrow. One overnight later, this thing is looking pretty much exactly the same. A little more dried out. It's a little looser up top, may have untwisted or may have compacted the way I was hoping. See a couple of air pockets in there, but I think that's gonna be just fine. So now it's time to get this thing smoked off. And because I wanna to continue to hang this thing, options are pretty limited, but I think I figured out a way to make this work on the mini chud box. Still got these little hooks on there. We're just gonna reach right up through and drop it down. That's right, I hooked it right onto the old smokestack here. And there we go, plenty of clearage. Not touching the bottom at all, perfect. And we're gonna give this thing a good old fashioned cold smoke with the smoke tube. Got this full of oak pellets. Put that off to the side, fire it up. Beautiful. And as you can see, we got plenty of smoke coming out of there. And because it's a cold smoke generator, we're not gonna have any temps in there other than whatever temp it gets up to today. But we should have plenty of smoke pouring through there, getting this thing nice and smoky for the next probably four or five hours. And yes, that casing is in fact smoke permeable. So we'll check back in later. All right, folks, so this bologna chub here smoked in that mini chud box for about four or five hours, which is how long that smoke tube lasts for. I then pulled it out and I popped it into this vessel with a sous vide attachment in there and cooked it at 180. 85 degrees for about two hours until it came up to an internal temp of about 155. But I put it in just like this, didn't wrap it up or anything like that, and everything's looking just fine. To temp it, I just stuck my probe thermometer in there, no fat leached out or anything like that. And once it came up to temp, out it came. I dumped the hot water out, filled this with a bunch of ice water, and gave it a nice chill. And once completely cooled down, this is what we are left with. And looking at it now, it looks like there's a few air pockets in there, but all in all, it's feeling really sturdy and really strong and I think it's time to slice in and see how it came out. Moment of truth. I think this is a proper time to bust out my big bologna knife. We're gonna just go right down the middle here. Ooh, man, I did not make that cut straight. And there it is. Looks like some bologna to me. Definitely got a couple of air pockets, but all in all, that is a nice, firm looking emulsified sausage. Very happy about that. <laughs> But yeah, definitely didn't cut it straight. I was looking at the camera. That's my bad. But right, let's peel some of this back and see how it looks. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. That is a big chub of some bologna. That is incredible. Should we get a little slice? Mm, nice and thin. That was a very successful slice. Look at that, holds together well, nice and floppy, but still holding together. Great bind on that. Look at that, homemade bologna. Let's give it a try, like a fourth grader. Mmm, well, that's phenomenal. Wow, that's good. Nice and smoky. That nutmeg is coming through, giving it that little bologna je ne sais quoi. But wow, that's tasty. Nice pink hue to it. Mmm, that's really good. Nice and smoky, perfectly seasoned. Tell you what, that beats any bologna I've had from the store. Mmm, hmm. <laughs> Looking good to me. There we go, even thinner. I wanna stick that to a roof. Um, oh, that was good. Oh, I like it nice and thin. And there you go, a classic bologna sandwich. I haven't had a bologna sandwich like this in a very long time. <clears throat> mm-hmm, not bad. Tastes like prison. A lot better than I was expecting. It's got some real nice smoky flavor to it. Mm, pretty successful experiment, if I do say so. But I think we can do better than this. 
That's right, folks. We're going to smoke this side. Nice, even scores all the way around. Do a couple scores this way. Now that it's all nicely scored, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, yeah. We're just going to slather this thing in mustard. Ooh, yeah. Nothing feels weird about this. How you doing, buddy? And then to finish it off, some good old-fashioned chud rub. Tell you what, folks, I've seen a lot of smoked bologna videos on the internet, but I've never seen anyone do it completely from scratch before. And maybe there's a reason for that. This is a little bit ridiculous. And there we go. Chud chub, fully rubbed. And on the pit we go. I have got a brisket and a rack of ribs cooking. So we already got this pit fired up. We're going right around 275 degrees. And we'll see how long this chud chub takes to break open a little bit, heat through, and get nice and smoky. After about two hours, whew, we've got ourselves a beautiful little smoked bologna chub. I mean, just look at that thing. Love it. Ooh, this is feeling nice and barky, nice and crusty. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and take a big old slice out of this thing. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Double smoked bologna. Nothing wrong with that. Got the old chud press fired up. Got some nice buttered bread. Get that toasted off. Beautiful. Throw a little butter down. And time to fry our bologna. Gotta love that sound. Might as well give it a press. God, it smells so good. So that is some good looking bologna. I mean, come on. Ooh, yep. Double stack. Now that is a true smoked bologna sandwich. And there it is, folks, bologna mountain. Got some cold cuts, got our nice cheesy sandwich right here with a double stacked layer of griddled double smoked bologna. Oh, I gotta dive on in. That's something I would buy every day of the week, just looking at it. Mm, wow, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Damn. I mean, anytime you get some Martin's bread, butter toasted on a flat top, on the chud press that is, with some smoky meat and melty American cheese, a little mayo, a little mustard, you know you're gonna have a good time. That is phenomenal. Mm. That is on a different planet compared to the prison sandwich that we did earlier. This has got me rethinking bologna. I don't think I've actually bought bologna ever in my life, but this, this is a whole new thing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is definitely one of those labor of love videos where uh, this isn't something you're gonna casually whip up on a Tuesday night, but at the same time, 10 pounds of bologna will last you a good long while, especially if you're going thin cut like that. If I had a bunch of kids, I would have a bunch of that on hand, I tell you what. But like most things I do on this channel, I do it just for the experience, right? If you've never made bologna, which I don't think most people have made their own bologna if we were to do a survey. So it's cool to be one of the few that have, and it definitely pays off. Mm. Mm, it's like gourmet toddler food. So good. But with this final bite, and without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. That was a quick one, bud. Wanna try this one? All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic scratch-made homemade bologna. I highly recommend giving this one a try if you've got the equipment, because sure, it takes a long time, but it's really easy to make. And other than that really messy food processor stage, it comes together pretty quick. And sure, there's a lot of dishes, but I mean, if you're in the sausage-making game, you're already used to that. And also, it's a really cool experiment. I'd love to try this again, maybe make a jalapeno cheddar one or something stuffed with, like, olives or pistachio or something weird like that. But, but either way, if you make this recipe, I think you will be impressed and you'll have a whole new respect for bologna. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.